Lord Carrington, there are, I think there is nobody else uh, alive who can say that they were called in by Winston Churchill and offered a position in the government. Well, I was, as a matter of fact, I was shooting here, I was shooting partridges, it was, and um, a man came up on a bicycle and he said to me, um, the Prime Minister wishes to speak to you on the telephone. And I thought he was joking. Um, but I reflected and thought, well, it would be awful if he wasn't joking, and I didn't pay any attention. So I went back to the house here and rang up uh, number 10, and, and Churchill came on the telephone. And he said in that inimitable voice, he said, you've been shooting partridges. And I said, yes. He said, would you like to join my shoot? <laughs> what about your war? Because in your book, you don't talk about the MC you got, which is a jolly good medal to get, isn't it? Well, you held a bridge. We held it. We captured it. You captured it. <laughs> yeah, well, that was. And um, were you in charge? Well, I was. I was fairly junior officer. I remember being told that uh, I was to, to go over with uh, some tanks and uh, capture this bridge where the Germans were, thinking that it was a very rather stupid idea. <laughs> However, you do what you're told. And we, anyway, we finally got over it without it being blown up. Obviously, Churchill was a brilliant wartime prime minister. But I don't think you'd say he was the best peacetime prime minister. So who was in your book? Oh, in my book, Harold Macmillan. Um, Harold Macmillan was an um, immensely civilised man. When you look back on what he inherited after Sirius and then came up with a big conservative majority end of it, that in itself was good, but he, he was a patriot. He was a great man and he was extraordinarily funny. I confess that my first contact with politics, possibly even with sex too, was, was Perfumer. I liked Jack Perfumer very much and um, I was very sad when it happened. And I think his great mistake was telling a lie in the House of Commons. If, if he hadn't lied, I think it would all have been over in a few months and he'd have been forgiven. Did you ask him about why he lied? Yes. And he said, um, oh, this was uh, two or three months after it was all over, and he said, well, the problem was the, naval, the Russian naval attaché was involved at all, and I thought that was really very significant and difficult in the middle of the Cold War and so on. And I thought that what I, if I went to bed with Miss Keeler was unimportant compared with any, any problems I had with the, with the Russians. OK, Mrs Thatcher. We used to have the most terrible rows, but the thing about what it about? was she, she didn't mind. She rather enjoyed a row. What did you have rows about? Well, we had rows about Rhodesia, we had rows about the Falklands, we had rows about uh, every kind of thing. Did you resign over the Falklands to save her? No, I resigned over the Falklands because uh, I thought that if we were going to go to war, the last thing you wanted was to have uh, the whole of the British press and everybody else trying to decide who was to blame. And if you're going to have a war in which uh, I mean, however small the war is, you better go united and stop worrying about who was responsible. So somebody had better resign and get on it. After all, I was Foreign Secretary and uh, there we were. But you don't need me to tell you that that, generally speaking, in politics is not why people resign. Every, everybody has to make up their own mind about whether or not the right thing to do is, is to go or, or stay. I mean, for example, I had a, 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 a terrible scandal there was about Critchell Down and I was summoned by the Prime Minister Winston Churchill who uh, said to me do you want to resign <laughs> and I said well no I didn't want to resign I think I ought to I think you better not he said so that was that. Supposing Mrs Thatcher had, had called you in and said do you want to resign you didn't want to resign. Yes but all. Mrs Thatcher wasn't Winston Churchill. <laughs> Do you worry about Europe now? Do you think there's a danger we might fall out? I, I was um, very much pro-European. I've become rather more agnostic about what's happened in the last uh, few, few years. 
But I, I think it would be disastrous if we left Europe. I think it would be a really stupid thing to do. And I hope we wouldn't. How do you view politics now? I don't know enough about it to make a judgment. But uh, I, I don't think, I think the Prime Minister is being very badly treated in the sense that people are being very critical of him when they don't seem to realise that he has the most extraordinarily difficult job holding a coalition together. And if you look at what's happening economically, he hasn't done all that badly. Did you ever think you would see a peacetime coalition? No, I didn't. And I think it, um, I think it's really, let's hope it doesn't happen again. I think one party is much better. Is there anything you'd like to have done that you didn't do? No, I would have hated to be Prime Minister. Would you? Oh, no, yes. Come on. Well, I don't think um, I'm economically literate enough. But were any of them? Well, uh, there's always somebody who'll tell you, but I'd rather not, I think. Lord Carrington, thank you very much for talking to us. Have I said anything I'm, I regret? No, no. nothing at all. You've been Not very yet. cautious. <laughs>